Okay. Welcome to another episode of the Culture Plug. Today we have Harlem's own O Bills. <laughs> what up, y'all? <laughs> Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Before we begin, did you listen to Cardi B album? Nah, I was bumping some. I was <laughs> I was in the Uber going to the club, and there was some females in the back was playing it. I was just hyped. Okay. It was hype. It I was heard, hype? I heard some of it. It was hype. Cardi B putting on, no. no. Brandon, I forgot to ask you last week. What was your opinion? I think it's fire. I mean, she's not out here trying to be like the most lyrical nigga. She's, nah, she's she just being internet. herself. That's mm-hmm. what it's about. Like, be yourself. The, um, I feel like the internet overdid it this week for that Cardi B versus um, Nicki. That was annoying. <laughs> Some other shit that was annoying. Shout out to both of them. Shout out to her. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Shout Um, out to to Nikki for dog shots. (laughs) (laughs) Tristan versus Chloe. That was another annoying thing. He knew the playoffs was coming up, so he wanted to get rid of the Kardashian. (laughs) (laughs) I really feel like he wanted to get caught. I really feel like Tristan wanted to get caught. Did you see the nigga looking in the camera? (laughs) He could have put a face on. He could have did something. He could have did something. Did you pee when Gabrielle Union stepped inside the shade room? No, she said. So basically, they have a footage of her like kind of near them, like while he was like, um, while he got caught cheating. And Gabrielle Union basically Mm -hmm. like, I wasn't there. I don't know nothing. Spicy, spicy situations. Yesterday was Coachella. Um, I watched. I was watching the performance of Beyonce. That shit was just like beyond epic. Yeah. She did the whole kind of concept of the drum line. She added like fraternity type of stuff. Like she they was on line. Shit, too, like huh? Super Bowl. Now she be having the best shows. Yeah. That, that was epic. Destiny Childs came out. Wow. Um, yeah. hmm? Solange came out and dan- danced as well. Um, what else? Um, Jay Z popped out too. Did like yeah. one little right? All the people that are close to her. I like that. My favorite part is when he be performing with Beyonce and he be telling her to sing. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like them alone though. I like, they You like the first person to say that. I don't know. I don't know. Like, when I see On The Run, I, I kind of... Like, she's still the show. That's, that's hands down. Mm-hmm. But I kind of like appreciate them a little bit more. Separate? Separate. Yeah. I don't that's know. I haven't that's been. Right. I haven't they, been. They have the best duo since like over, over a decade. You think so? Just like, cause they're a real couple, you know what I'm saying? Like, That's true. And like, they've been doing music since like way Forever, back. Forever, right? That's true. I don't know. I haven't been to a Jay-Z concert and I haven't been to a Beyonce concert yeah. yet. Yeah. I hope like every time when a concert come around, like I hope this is not the last one. Yeah, cause I can't, I can't leave this earth yeah, without yeah. seeing no, a Beyonce yeah. show or a Jay-Z show. Yeah. Okay, so um, what did you grow up listening to? Are you a Jay-Z fan? I listen, I listen to Jay-Z, I listen to Nas, I listen to um, DMX, I listen to too much music. You know? Too much, that's what you yeah. like, listen to the most? Like, but like, when I, like, when I first was getting into like, trying to write and shit, I was listening to Jay-Z and Nas. What's Jay-Z. your favorite album mm-hmm. from Jay? What was the one that stuck with me? It was the one that he wrote a book about. It wasn't um, the blueprint. I like the blueprint though. The the one that decoded is about. Decoded, I, yeah, I that. Think, ah, I read that book. How was it? Like yeah. low key, that book taught me how to like, like that's how I write now. Like the way he write. Mm. If you read it, he has like he puts like slashes in between like the lines, like his punchings and some shit, some shit like that. But that's how I do it now. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be my next book. I'm gonna read it. Oh yeah, it's a good book. Mm-hmm. How did you start doing music? How long have you been doing music for? Um, I got first, first, I first tried, I was like 15. I was trying to make beats. Mind you, I wasn't trying to rap. I was, I was trying to make beats, so. Um, Who was around you that made you want to like make beats? Nah, nobody really. Nobody, I was just, I was interested in beats. And mm-hmm. It's funny cause like, um, the first person that really like peeped, like I was trying to make beats or whatever, like, um, his name is Suave, he's from like East Harlem, mm-hmm. and he does a lot of production for Davies now. 
Like, okay. He's been doing it for like he produced his first tape. And you know, then, but, like he Yeah, he's like the first person that peeped out trying to get on that. Mm-hmm. I guess from there I was, I was kinda trying to take it serious, but then I fell back. And then um around that time like uh Lil Uzi hit me up. This is like before he was like really, really Lil Uzi? Yeah. Wow. And, um, and what year was this? It was like two thirteen. But so how old were you then? I was like fifteen, sixteen. Wow. Okay, so so little Uzi hits you up for a beat. Yeah, he like he been seeing my shit and then he was like, Yo, I need some production for my EP. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking to him about it and I'm like, yo, like, I'm not really trying to like, I'm trying to get on my rap and shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So um I kinda slept on that. I could have made a beef on but Oh mm-hmm. going back you would you wish you would have did it or is Nah, it? cause it still it still could happen, you know. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So um that comes along, you tell yourself I'm gonna stop doing beats. What transitioned um, into rapping, doing music? <laughs> so I right, so when I first started recording, I was recording I was recording off of uh off like you know like the little top part for like the computer like the big desktop like the apple mm-hmm. it's like a little mic at the, at the top I was recording like on top of that okay that little mic uh huh and <laughs> I recorded a whole a, a whole project off that a bunch of I, I recorded a bunch of shit off of that I was bugging up but I was just hungry you know so mm-hmm. I was just dropping shit and, and then like finally like someone put me on to like a good studio. Mm-hmm. In Brooklyn, and then um, yeah, shout out to my OG Knight. Yeah, he um, he saw I had potential and shit. So like he 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 taught me like how to like breathe on tracks, like take your time and shit like that, and like just because I didn't know like I didn't know how to record. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like so he, he told basically you. like taught me how to record, like how to do this shit properly, and then from there I just took off and just started. You started doing beats and Being stuff consistent. like that. Now I stopped doing beats. No, no, I mean you started doing music. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. My first actual project, I don't know if the there's certain people that I know, like fans, that they'll know. They'll tell you it's Dark Visions. That mm-hmm. was like some shit from like two fourteen, and that shit was like on. You can still find it. It's on like lively mixtape shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, that shit kind of like took off from there a little bit. But what was the procedure? Like, how did it take off? Like, did somebody? I was just promoting myself, really, just show face, shit like that. Like, I was doing shows, all mm-hmm. types of shit. And, um, shot a couple of videos. Nah, I didn't shoot that many videos. I shot, I, sh- I started shooting videos, more videos to like 2.15. Mm-hmm. That's when I started like, um, I started going stupid. And then um, that's when I had my little EP. Um, and then yeah, after that, after that EP, that's when like shit started, started to come about. Mm-hmm. Like I said. So I know we already talking about you doing music, but like, I wanted to like backtrack a little bit. Did growing up in Harlem play a part in you wanting to do music? Do you feel like Harlem and music? Brooklyn played a part? They both played a part. Yeah, you were telling going me. back and forth. I like because at one point I stayed in Harlem, just strictly in Harlem, and then I started going back and forth. I was like thirteen or some shit like that, twelve or something like that. And this Brooklyn has a different vibe from Harlem, so. I guess like the like both really like the whole New York itself like growing up in New York it plays a whole side to like what I'm doing right now because like, like the type of music that I'm that I'm making now like I found my sound finally you know what I'm saying like I'll say like two sixteen I found my sound. Wait, officially found sound. What's the difference to you between Harlem and and Brooklyn? Um, Harlem really like everybody think they're a superstar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's so, a New York thing though. That's a New York thing, but like strict like really Harlem, like everybody thinks they're a superstar, like they're a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Harlem. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. And how was your childhood growing up? What was it like? Shit. 
It was wild. I was in, doing a lot of wild shit. Because I wanted to ask you, because you have a lyric in one of your songs where you said, um, you said something about feeling like you're 26 because... Yeah, because I, be I be living life so hard, like, I was done, I, like, the shit that I done did, like, I feel like, <laughs> like, I was looking at, I, I, I look at life so different because I'm like, I don't live life like a, like I'm 25 type shit. So mm -hmm. a lot of things that I done did, like, like what I'm doing right now, like I'm not trying to do what I was doing back then. Okay, know? so how do you think a 25 year old lives their life? Like how I was living at like 16. And what was he living like at 16? <laughs> like. <laughs> I was going OT by myself with other people, whatever, like just doing, just doing shit and um, just doing whatever. Like 18, I left the house. My parents tried to kick me out. They thought they was, they thought they was slick. I was, <laughs> I kicked myself out. So um, fast forward to 2017, ET, Global Vibe, Volume 1, comes out. Yeah. That's where I feel like everyone is like, oh shit. Um, how did ET um, Global Volume One come about? Like, why did you name it? Alright. Uh, um, so basically, like ET, like the ET part is is like it stands for this shit, Elegant Track. Elegant Track. Elegant Track came about because, like. You do it so elegantly. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I'm also I'm also swift that, you know, I don't know. I was just I was calmly making money doing what I was doing. And I, I just came up with something and I was bored. And this shit came about smooth, so. Yeah, I've been repping that since I was like 16. Okay. And, um, that's always been the movement. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically, like, like the ET is elegant trap. It, it has more acronyms. Yeah, know? I noticed you. Like ET you. is extraterrestrial, too. That's another meaning for it. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's also like eat together because it's, it's it's different people that I have that are, uh that is that's associated with the movement, but they're all around the world, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Um, I noticed you use the same producer, Blank Body, mm -hmm. on uh, on the whole EP. How did you Shout meet up with him? Body. Um, his girl actually found out about me. She told me like she she found my shit and she told me he. She told him about me, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's how that came about. But I found him. I I found him a, a while ago when I first was trying to like make beats and shit. Cause he was a person that he yeah, was, his beats is he's like, way he he's like way ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? So where is he from? Um, he's from California. Cali, okay. Yeah. Um, some of my favorite songs is like Boss Up, mm -hmm. Focus. Mm -hmm. Um, hit. There's this one line you saying hit like um, this is my last game being broke with the twelve v. Yeah, shout out to twelve v. How did I you linked them up? I linked them like last, like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. How did you meet him, or how did he get wind of you? I know, or, he, hmm. I, like I, uh, I've I've been around, so it's like people know, you know, like people just know by face. You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he hit me up. He was like, like I'm trying to work with you. So then I, I slipped through not too long ago. We was working on the beat, you know, worked on the track and shit like that. So that shit coming together soon. Well, it was a pleasure having you. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to say before you wrap it up? Now, I appreciate y'all. Uh, I just want to say to all the people around the world, like, the world is yours, little nigga. Go grab that shit. And, you know what I'm saying? Keep doing you, keep being yourself. You know what I'm saying? Look at the world, don't look at your phone, don't look at the mirror, like, see the whole world from your your point of view, you know what I'm saying? But talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. No, real talk, I appreciate y'all.